Let's talk about how Pro Tools is used as a music creation platform. Pro Tools incorporates an extensive set of MIDI-based tools and functions that allow you to get your ideas into the computer quickly without losing your spontaneous moments of creativity so that you can keep your project in one place from start to finish. One benefit of working entirely within Pro Tools is that the MIDI functions utilize the same editing and automation tools used to edit the audio, so there's no need to learn a separate set of tools just to work with your MIDI. As well, with Pro Tools, the editing of your MIDI and audio takes place in the same window. Along with the MIDI functions, the creative possibilities you'll find within Pro Tools have become nearly limitless. Using a full range of software-based synths, samplers, and drum machines from DigiDesign and their development partners, you're able to make the most efficient use of your host-based CPU processing power and the expandable power on demand, TDM. There are three different ways you can choose to use software instruments within the Pro Tools environment. These are Direct Connect, TDM, and HTDM. Direct Connect allows host-based applications that run in the background on your computer to communicate with Pro Tools. It allows you to route the audio from your host-based synths and samplers right into your session. TDM plugins, on the contrary, use the power of the DSP chips found on your HD process cards. You're not limited by the finite processing power of your host CPU. And lastly, there's HTDM, which stands for Host TDM. While these instruments run on the host CPU, the real difference is that they are plugins within your Pro Tools session and not applications that run in the background. One of the major benefits of working with HTDM is that the plugin settings and automation are saved with your session. All of these technologies, Direct Connect, TDM, and HTDM, can be used at the same time in the same session. And this gives you the freedom to use your processing and plugins where and when you need them. Now, here's more on music creation in Pro Tools. Daryl, what do you have lined up here? What well, what we have is a rhythm track section. So it's a funky little groove, and we're going to augment that track with some soft synths and some soft samplers. So first thing we want to get into is we have some acoustic piano samples loaded into soft sample cell. Oh, OK. And that's ready so to go. So all set up from Pro Tools. Mm -hmm. So let's arm that track and uh, do okay. a pass. So then we're going to go back and augment that with a little synth solo from Native Instruments Pro 52. Oh, OK. Oh, here we go. <laughs> you ready? Yeah. All right, here we go. I remember the drag before in the studio was, oh, let's try this synth. And you used to walk across the room or go to storage and pull it out. And it's like now we have all these vintage synths that we used to use, like the, the Pro 52 and all these things. We have them all in software now, and they're instantly accessible inside of Pro Tools. That's great. We have had the chance to use Pro Tools to create a surround sound environment live. And Dave Hampton, I mean, you're the guy, you're the surround engineer, you're the guy that did it, so maybe you can tell them. Uh, yeah, we, we basically started repurposing a lot of mixes that Herbie was doing from This Is The Drum album in particular, because that album has, is a stereo album, but sonically, that album had so many things happening that were beyond 
where recording was at at that time, and you can hear it when you listen to the album. Well, we initially conceived that record from the beginning to be Surround. Surround, Surround. Surround yeah. yeah. So it was composed that way, conceived and composed that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and... Uh, we were a little early, I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, we, we took a lot of those tunes and, and rehearsed without a surround system for like two days. And then Herbie said, no, we need to turn it all on. And I was, I'm always the safe one. He's always the work without a net one. So uh, what, what we did is we brought everything down, set it up and fired it up and, and just started going, started assigning different things. And, mm -hmm. and just even the layout and relationship of where everything was laid out, we worked out in rehearsal. So things were ergonomically okay to get to, easy to get to, easy to work with, because the fact I had two joysticks over here, I had eight sources of activity. I had some sources that I used where I did use the link button where I could go here and say, okay, I'm, I want to move two channels at one time, mm -hmm. be it two stereo channels or be it two different events. There were some things where I had to go here and move DJ disc and right after I did that I had to go into a solo right, so. and um, just do a lot of things that, that I couldn't have done on a normal console. Composers that haven't really been thinking beyond stereo, they can start thinking about how to compose pieces where elements of those pieces can be used in a surround environment mm -hmm. and it can so it can shape their uh, compositional perspective mm -hmm. you know so that music will actually change as as a result i mean it's it's a whole new world now you know as it should be pro tools is ever evolving and one of the very coolest uh, things that is now available within Pro Tools is this function called Beat Detective. Beat Detective, among other things, can help identify and create a tempo map for any data that you enter into the computer here. Here is a, a pretty basic simple loop. Okay, so what I did was I took that loop and I repeated it and I put in markers and I created a, a song map. And here is a, a funky little cool loop right here. And I'm going to solo it and listen to it. It's called Indian Crush. But it's completely out of time to this loop here. With Beat Detective, I can take this loop here and make it work within the timing of this one here. And here's how you do it. Highlight the section. Open up Beat Detective, capture the selection, then I hit Analyze. And then you go to Region Separation, and what it does is it's analyzing where all those hits are, and it's going to cut right on those hits. So now we have, I'm going to zoom in a little bit, okay, now we have a section here that's cut on various elements of the groove, kick, snare, whatever it's identifying. And then I'm going to conform this. Now what conforming will do is take those those pieces and snap them to the time frame and you hit conform. Now here is that whole selection but one thing I can also do at this point is crossfade everything and smooth out the editing and I do that by highlighting it and then going to edit smooth boof. If I jump up very closely this is the one region, this is the next region. By smoothing it, it puts its crossfade right here at a five millisecond crossfade. And you can change the crossfade to anything you want. So then when I zoom back out, I've got this groovy little number. It sounds like this. Okay, now, it's a lot of little pieces and it might be hard to manipulate. So another thing that I'm gonna do is highlight this whole piece here and use this command called consolidate selection and what that does is it takes all of the regions that are highlighted and it makes one region out of them. That's a, a, an invaluable tool that I use constantly because you can edit stuff up and you can have a sound file that's got hundreds and hundreds of little edits. With the consolidation it takes the, all of these little edits from one track and makes one nice cozy region out of it. And this is what it sounds like with the other loop. Pretty cool, hey? Now that I have a tempo map, I can create a MIDI track. This is a MIDI track that was created uh, using an internal plugin called Battery, and it's just a drum groove.
So now I have another loop that fits exactly with the tempo map of what's going on here. And that's going to sound like this. Okay. Okay, so here I am. I've got my track laid out. And what's a song without a guitar solo, right? <laughs> I am a poser from the 80s, you know. <laughs> okay, so I designed this guitar sound using all this input technology and a nice little grungy tone. And I'm just going to wing it, man, because that's what you do. Okay, that was one take, and if I don't like that take, I have the option of using a hidden track. You can create an endless amount of playlists, so you can continue to do take after take after take, so you don't have to lose anything that you did before, and then you can edit between the playlists to compile a comp. And as a matter of fact, if you've done this before, analog, making comps, and you try it within Pro Tools, you'll never go back. So here's another take. Comping is, is, you know, this attempt to bring in different performances, sometimes from different days, that uh, the sum total will be better than any one of them. In the old days of comping vocals, everyone would sit around who had anything to do with this, say, the producer and the singer, and if there was someone else in the band who was close to it, and the engineer, and you'd have this grid of, you'd have all of the, the, the lyrics, and then you'd have the track numbers, and you'd like write over the words, oh, I like this track here, and then you'd try and punch it to see how that one worked. And they go, no, I'll try it. I'll do it this way. I like four, three, six. But with Pro Tools, it's sort of more organic because you can zero in on a very small part or on a very big part. I like to comp vocals where I have every track visible and I'm muting them. And by using Mute Freeze Voice, it can switch between the different tracks to go to which one you want to have. And as you put together the phrase that you like, then you bring it up and that's your comp vocal. <laughs> Once you've created the combination of the vocals, some people will at that point go in and do volume rise. After that, I think that the most important thing now is to make sure that it's in tune. And uh, the plugin that I've been using the most is called Auto-Tune, which allows you to adjust pitch and to uh, fix singers, but also instruments who have had great performances, but there's just some part of their performance where the, the pitch is uh, you know, drifted off a little sharp or flat. Uh, there's a number of ways to use it. Automatic mode is set with the retune and the tracking, which just tells you how much is, is autotune going to grab a note and try and change it. The default, though, is a good place to start. If you want to be more careful about it, there's a graphical mode. In the graphical mode, you start by taking a sample and you track the pitch. Now you have this, these phrases that, as we can see, you can see the, the kind of the graphical uh, view of what this young woman sang. As you can see, this is really an E, but she's moving up and down, which is really her vibrato. So what I usually like to do is what's called make curve. What make curve does is it draws a line that mimics this section. Then you can go into to the arrow, and if you hold down Control and Option, you won't slide left or right. And you're able to take this whole little section and slide it up and center it on E. And that is really where you think she went. She wanted to go hit an E, and she has vibrato. Now we've kept all of the characteristics of when she decided to have the vibrato go up and down, but we've created the, the, the tonal reference, rather than being a little bit flat or just drifting a little flat, is now centered. 
Now, in this case, she did not drift flat. But if, you, if, if she had drifted flat and you didn't like that, you can also come in and just grab the end rather than the whole section and then pull the whole thing so it's going up or down. So that is a way to correct someone who has a tendency to just sort of fall off of a note and you want to keep them on the note.